guys, King of Charmanders here. Alright, so today we have one of a very actually popular like starting Pokemon from Generation 1 Kanto is Venusaur. Now Venusaur is really interesting. It does a ton of damage with those frenzy plants. It charges energy quickly. It has coverage with Sludge Bomb and it actually is I think the anti-charmer of the Holiday Cup. So Venusaur's like purpose from what I see is to either one like tank those counter users in Vigoroth or Obstagoon or basically wall the charmers or yeah basically wall the charmers which in a sense it doesn't really wall the charmers because like what like Wigglytuff has ice beam Wigglytuff has ice beam what else Alola Ninetales also has Psy Shock so they have coverage moves but you it tanks the other damage per, it tanks like it is basically an anti-charmer and it does very well against the fighters now, as you see here, Venusaur actually has a pretty balanced stat spread. It isn't super tanky, but it can take a hit because, as you see, it has high attack, defense, and stamina. Very balanced across the board. It can take a few hits, especially if it does resist those moves. That's why it works very... It functions very well as an anti-fighter as well as an anti-charmer. More as a charmer than, a fi than an anti-fire though. Now you are weak to a few things. For example, you are weak to fire, so Alola Marowak isn't your best friend. You are weak to flying as well, so Skarmory Sky Attacks, etc. do suck. And as I mentioned, Ice Beams from Wigglytuff hurt those Ice Shards from Lapras and Dugong hurt. However, you can cover them because you are a grass type and you do heavy damage with these Frenzy Plants. And Psychic, so those Psy Shocks from Alolan, from A9, they do heavy damage, so be careful. Now you do resist grass, so the good thing is if your opponent is having this run a Shadow Vic or Grass Hole, you do resist, you do double resist it, so you do very well against that. And you also resist Fairy and Fighting, as I mentioned. You also resist Electric and Water. So Water, like Bibarel, Surfs, those Water Pulses, Electric types, like a Stun. You'll effectively wall a Seal, effectively, not really wall Stun Fisk, but then you will, you definitely resist, you'll resist it pretty well, especially if it has Thundershock. So... You do pretty well against the Pancake. As you see, its strength is its Vine Whip that charges fast, Frenzy Plant that does heavy damage, and Sludge Bob that gives it coverage. Venusaur is really good for the Holiday Cup. Alright, so as you see here, Venusaur, I have to look for it, but here's the people.com rankings. I would so Shadow doesn't make too much of a difference. I would actually use this version. I would use the regular version. Shadow works as well, however. If you look between the differences between each one, I think the extra bulk from regular one will help, but either one works. Also, Shadow's hard to obtain, so if you don't want to have that headache and you already have a Venusaur build, guess what? The regular version works just fine, and it allows you to tank more damage. As you see here, you actually have stronger ratings against the fighters because Venusaur's bulk, and you also have a stronger rating against basically the rest of them just because you survive more damage, which is just the basic function. Also, the regular version can actually actually beat Alolan Gravel. The reason why Alolan Gravel is a little dangerous is because Rock Blast does chunk if you don't have the regular version. Rock Blast does a decent amount of damage if it hits Shadow Venusaur, so you have to be careful. Again, you lose to the Flyers in Skarmory and Altaria. You lose against the Fire Types in the Little Marowak. Galvantula does beat you as well as Magnezone. You have to be careful. Magnezone barely beats you, but Wild Charge just hurts. That's all I have to say. In the lead, Venusaur ranks at number 43. So it's best used in the lead, hopefully, or you can like lock it into like a charmer or something like that. It's probably like your best, uh, probably like the best way to go about it. Lock it into the charmer or the fighter. As you see here, this is your main thing. If you lock into either one of those, you have very strong range and you put a ton of pressure on them. You also can take things like the ground types or the rock types in Stunfisk and Alolan Graveler. That's what makes Venusaur kind of a great like anti. It's a great generalist across the board because it does take on a lot of the thing a lot of basically a lot of archetypes it takes on the the electric types in stunfisk and lone graveler it takes on the charmers as well as the fighters now of course the reason why it kind of sucks is because the flyers are very powerful against you you also fall against alola marowak and if they have galvantula it's gonna suck 
Now, Venusaur functions very well as a closer as well. As you see, the Shadow is better just because of the extra damage. However, the regular one does enough as well. As you see, Shadow does pretty much the same exact thing as the regular Venusaur does. It just has stronger ratings because of the closing scenario. As you see here, you take out the Charmers. You also take out the Ground Types and Obstagoon. You can... Now, here's the key thing you can... You, the Shadow can actually flip Vigoroth because it can OKO Vigoroth. In the closer, the reason why Vigoroth will win is because one, it wins CMP against you, and two, it spams you out. So that's one big difference in why being able to flip one fighter versus... You could still beat Vigoroth as long as it has chip damage, so I wouldn't pull this too heavy as far as like losing against Vigoroth because... The 523 rating isn't bad, and like I said, as long as you have Chip on Vigoroth, you can finish off Vigoroth. It's not that much of a big deal. As a switch, I wouldn't use Venusaur as a safe switch, but I would have I would switch into what you're strong against. For example, if they throw their Charmer or Fighter or their Stunfisk into you, throw your Venusaur into it, and you'll be very comfortable. Alright, as you see here, we have the PeopleVoke.com rankings. As always, if you would like to donate, please consider doing so. I have Venusaur. I also have the Shadow one here. No other moveset. You want Frenzy Plan. You also want Sludge Bomb so you can cover... For example, so you're going to Sludge Bomb in Altaria because it's going to resist Frenzy Plan, etc. Frenzy Plan does heavy damage and Community moves are necessary, are naturally overpowered. So, here's the Venusaur. I have the regular and the Shadow one. Might as well analyze both just for science and you'll get to see just how like Venus... The differences are minor, but in some situations like the closer, it can make a difference. I have the two shield. We hit battle. Now, as you see, we get here. You take out Diggersby. As you see here, you're able to take out Diggersby. You have a stronger ring with Diggersby because of Fire Punch. Shadow One can take out Galvantula. So the reason why you take out Galvantula is because you're actually able to Frenzy Plant it down. So Frenzy Plant is able to take out Galvantula versus the regular version because the extra shadow damage matters. Now it kind of flips around. You beat Graveler and Lantern because they are... You pretty much wall Lantern because you you resist both Thunderbolt and Hydro Pump and both of its fast moves. That's why your rating so powerful. You also beat Magnezone with the regular... This is where it gets kind of weird. You beat Magnezone with the regular version. You beat Galvantula with the Shadow. So it's really up to you. You lose against the Flyers, of course, and the Fire Types. You lose against... You beat Opsigoon. You're going to lose against A-Slash because of those Ice-type attacks. You also beat, you lose against Skarmory and Talonflame because they're Flyers. Other than that, you're able to beat Snorlax. You destroy Stunfisk because you effectively wall. So you don't necessarily wall it, but if it's the Thundershock one, you do fine. Even if it does have Mud Bomb, it doesn't threaten you super hard. Just because those Frenzy Plants are going to hurt a hell of a lot more than those Mud Bombs. This is where it gets really interesting. Win the two shield, you beat Vigoroth and Obstagoon. I believe in the closer, you lose against Vigoroth. However, I'd rather... I, the two shield is, in my opinion, more important than the zero shield because you never want to be in the zero shield with a Venusaur because it's very likely you're in the zero shield with something you lose against. Or, yeah. So, do, I wouldn't, like, try not to close out with Venusaur. If it closes out with energy, you could do well. As you see, you beat both Charmers too. Now, the interesting thing is you actually lose against Whimsicott just because Whimsicott can charm you down, which is kind of... It resists because it's weird because it resists your frenzy plants. Okay, that's why you beat it with the Venusaur and you don't beat it with Shadow. So you don't see Whimsicott a lot, but that's just something to keep in mind. So as you see, you're able to beat both Whimsicott and Wigglytuff with Venusaur. So a regular Venusaur. So as you see, the two shield, two shield Venusaur is pretty dang strong. So switch it into a Fighter or switch it into a Wigglytuff or a Whimsicott or any other Charmer if you do happen to lock into it. Alright, we did the two shield, now here's the one shield. As you see in the one shield, you're gonna lose hard against Bomba, so be careful. You still lose against Altaria. You beat Dugong, Diggersby, you have to be careful about Drippel and Frostlet just because of flying types, of course, against ice types as well. Now, with the regular version, you beat Alolan Graveler in the one shield. The interesting is you actually beat Magnuson with a shadow. I would rather the Venusaur, regular Venusaur works better. Just because the regular, like, A-Grab is probably going to be a lot more prominent than you'll see Magnezone. So, don't worry about the Magnezone matchup. As you see, you're a you lose against Galvantula just because those lunges will chip you down. You still, beat La you still beat both Lapras and Lantern. You lose against the Flyers, of course, and you lose against Alolan Marowak. You're going to lose against Alolan Sandslash and Flyers, so you lose against Tarmory and Talonflame. Now, you pick up Snorlax if you have the regular version. 
you lose if you have the shadow. So even more justification to use the regular version versus the shadow version. Now, in the one shield, you'll beat Obstagoon and Vigoroth, and you'll still beat the Charmers. And you'll still beat Stunfist. So Venusaur is really great still against the Fighters and the Charmers in the ones. In the closer, this is where things get interesting. So in the closer... In the closer, you beat pretty much what you beat before. Except you beat Galvantula with your shadow. You can still beat Galvantula in this scenario. So yes, the shadow beats regular Gal like Galvantula. However, though, if you have energy advantage with the... If you even have like... Watch. If you have one Vine Whip of energy. Just one. Here's what happens. Bink. You just have to hit it with... You just... Yeah, you just have to hit it with like... You just have to have one Vine Whip full of energy. So you can either one Sludge Bomb and then Frenzy Plant. Sludge Bomb does... 14 more damage than frenzy plant so if it comes down to the wire hit a sludge bomb and a frenzy plant because two frenzies actually don't friend two frenzies actually won't take depending on how it goes frenzies two frenzies won't take out a galvantula back to back so try to sludge bomb and frenzy plant but as long as you have one vine whip of energy advantage you can take out galvantula you beat graveler you beat lanterns you beat lapras of course and you beat dugong so you beat the waters you beat obstagoon now here's where it gets dicey you lose against vigoroth with the regular version but hear me out here's why it has to, as you see here if you have energy it only has it has a hp if you have energy lead so let's assume you have vine whips so this is where shadow does does more in kind of as you see it with energy even with one energy lead with one vine whip so that's 16 right so we start with eight. This is where things get interesting. So you have to have two Vine Whips of energy, but if you overcharge just a little bit on the previous matchup, you can take out Vigoroth. So just keep that in mind. As long as you have two Vine Whips full energy, you can take out a Vigoroth. So you can ease out of this matchup with energy advantage. With Venusaur, the great thing is that, yes, you take out like some negative matchups. For example, the one with Vigoroth as well as Galvantula. As long as you have, as long as you have just a little bit of energy advantage, it goes a long way. But at, with Gulf, with Venusaur in the closer, you flip Snorlax and you flip, you flip Snorlax. Yeah, being able to flip Snorlax is a good reason why. And being able to flip the other matchups that I mentioned with just a little bit of energy goes a long way. You're also able to take out the Charmers, so that's even a plus. You could Sludge Bomb them to death. And that's why Venusaur is really great. As you see, is the anti-Charmer. And in a sense, it can take on the fighters as well, very comfortably. In the one to zeros, as you see, Venusaur is a beast. Shadow can take out... This is where it gets kind of dicey. Shadow can take out Bomb and Altaria down a shield. And it can take on some of the flyers with with the, with the shield event. With one to zero shield advantage, as you see here. So there is justification for using a Venusaur. If you do end up with shield advantage, this is what it can do for you. Straight Mud Bomb. Or Sludge Bomb. Two to zeros. You beat the entire... I believe you beat the... No, you beat everything but Skarmory. Because it double resists you. Skarmory and Talonflame if you're holding Shadow. So Skarmory is the only thing that destroys you just because it pretty much it hard walls it hard walls Venusaur. In the two to ones, so if you have shield advantage, not having the zero clo the zero scenario, you beat Driplin with the shadow. You also beat Mandibuzz with the shadow. So you flip two flyer matches with the shadow. Other than that, you beat you beat you're able to beat a majority of meta except Sash Slash, Skarmory, ta basically flyers and ice types. Just because just because Slash Slash is able to resist your Vine Whips with its Steel Typing. So you lose against Sand Slash, you're also going to lose in Skarmory and Talonflame and Alola Marowak. Now, this is where you can actually beat Altaria in the 2 to 1s with the regular version versus the Shadow version. All you have to do is make sure if you bait with a Frenzy Plant, you can double Mud Bomb. Or double Sludge Bomb. Not Mud Bomb, Sludge Bomb. Double Sludge Bomb. As you see here, bait Frenzy Plant, double Sludge Bomb. And you can get the W. I, in my opinion, this one matchup is worth more than flipping Driftblim or Mandibuzz. Yes, those are two matchups. However, Altar is a very popular matchup. So being able to flip it with shield advantage is, in any scenario, is really good. Because you're both going to lose to really better relevant things like Lola Marowak, Skarmory, Basic Flyers. So if I had to give Venusaur a rating, I'd give it a yeah, 10. Venusaur does really well in the Holiday Cup meta for what people are using because... It's able to take on things like Stunfizz, Vigoroth, and the Charmers. Those are pretty popular picks. The one thing you have to really watch out for is... A actually, not one thing, but multiple things. The Flyers and Alola Marowak. So, Flyers and Alola Marowak are pretty popular. So, you have to just avoid those. As you see in certain scenarios, like with Shield Advantage, etc. You do have ways out against Flyers. 
There is also a merit of using the shadow versus the regular version. In my opinion, if you don't have a shadow one built and you aren't comfortable with it, I would just use the regular version. The regular version can still finish matchups for you if you're able to use it well. So the regular version is able to flip things like Frostless, etc. if you're able to use it, and Altaria in just basic shield advantage. So both of versions have merit. If I were you, I prefer the regular one just because in the two to ones, you can flip Altaria. That's reason enough for me. And you can still flip the fighter, the fighter matchup as long as you have energy advantage with Vigoroth. You can still beat Obstagoon convincingly. So that's the thing about Venusaur. Venusaur is a little skillful and tricky to use, but its general basis is it's able to cover a lot of things in this meta. Particularly things like the water types, like Dugong and Lapras, and Lantern. The Charmers in Whimsicott, Wigglytuff, and A9, as I mentioned, and also fighters like Vigoroth and Obstagoon. Because of its ability to anti-tank, especially the Charmers, Venusaur is a very strong pick for the Halloween Holiday Cup. You can, if you want to use it, I don't see why not. I've seen a lot of a lot of my friends do use it. And I've seen it used a lot from uh, in from other places, from other trainers as well, because it's just that good as kind of an anti an anti-Charmer pick for the most part. And it puts a ton of pressure with those Frenzy Plants. Frenzy Plant generates energy quickly, and Sludge Bomb gives you coverage against what resisted, what is resisted by Frenzy Plant, unless it's a Skarmory. If you guys like this video, please like and subscribe. Again, Venusaur is a very powerful pick. If you would like to use it, please, you, I definitely consider, do, I definitely recommend doing so. Good luck on your Go Battle League sets, and I will see you guys on the next video.